So I am sitting in a strange place because I've had the house to myself this week, which has been awesome. Um, but it means that I am sole carer for the tail that you can see there. Little wagging tail! Little wagging tail! Oh, did you just fart? You just farted on camera, like seriously? Shame on you! <laughs> Shame on you, flatulent dog! Shame on you! So yeah, so I've got the charming company of farting Presley here. Um, <laughs> you, I don't believe you just made your YouTube debut with a fart. Seriously? What a classy beast you are. I can see why you're my friend. So yeah, so I thought I would be downstairs with him because he doesn't like my room because it's a mess and he... That would be the clock. <laughs> it makes bird noises every hour. That was a great spotted woodpecker, apparently. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be noisy and strange down here. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm down here to keep the dog company and he's gonna wag his tail and make lots of noises and lots of farts. So, <laughs> lots of fun interruptions to the video. Um, and last night I had a friend round and got very stoned, so today my brain isn't really working. But I wanted to, I wanted to make a video anyway. Um, and when, when I was asking about Q&A questions, somebody suggested um, talking about piercing experiences and what ones hurt more and stuff like that. Um, and I have a fair few kind of piercing semi-disaster stories. So I thought I would share some of those. Oh, you're so pretty! You're so pretty! Um, yeah, so this this is gonna be really like distracted and discombobulated and like, oh, squirrel! Um, but yeah, so piercing stuff. I actually haven't had a new piercing in quite a long time because of like the epic fail I had with my... I had two piercings in my tongue for 12 years. If I can find a picture somewhere, I will put it up. Um, and I had those and I, they were my favourite piercings in the world and then in... was it two years ago? Yeah, 20... 2013? Um, they went horribly wrong. I had horrible, horrible infections and I had to take them both out. And after that, like, because the, the doctor was kind of like, yeah, well, when you get older, you you know, your body gets more hypersensitive to stuff. Um, you know, and after I lost both piercings, like, it wasn't simultaneous, like, one went and then the other did the same thing a few months later. I was like, okay, whatever, I'm old, I'm broken, I can't, I can't be doing with, you know, oral piercings anymore, so, yeah, I haven't, I haven't had new piercings in ages, but I think also the reason for that is, like, when I was kind of 16, um, me and my boyfriend at the time, we had a friend who worked at the piercing place, and so we could get piercings for really cheap. So it was like our little ritual, like almost every weekend we would go into town and we would get a new piercing. Um, and, and we got everything done really, really quickly. And then quite quickly you run out of things you want pierced. Like you really love it. It does become quite addicting, like getting new piercings, like the whole excitement of it and then the shiny new thing. And then, you know, dealing with the aftercare and then the excitement of like being able to change it and put jewelry in. It's like a whole thing and it's really fun. But like I did quite quickly run out of things I wanted pierced, like I never wanted a whole face full of metal really. Um, so I ran, I ran out of things and that was quite annoying. Um, but yeah, in terms of, in terms of painful piercings, I think weirdly one of the most painful actual piercing happening experiences was just my earlobes, like my first ever piercings were my earlobes like it is for most people. Um, because it was done with a gun and like obviously we all know these days you should never get anything pierced with a gun because it's like horrible, um, you know, abrupt blunt trauma rather than a piercing needle and it's not very sterile etc etc. Um, and that one like I had to stand up and look in the mirror because it felt like my ear was gushing blood because it's like such a kind of sudden like rah, pain. Um, so that was quite unpleasant. I think probably the most, the most traumatic um, piercing thing though is trying to do it yourself like there are some piercings because I say like me and my boyfriend we really got into piercings and um you know when we found out we could buy proper sterile piercing needles online we were like dude let's do this let's get some piercing needles let's do our own piercings and um so we we got the piercing needles and we did load we made like loads of holes in our ears and stuff because obviously there's some piercings you really don't want to do yourself like 
don't touch your fucking tongue yourself because there's veins and nerves and you can really fuck yourself up and I'd say also lip unless you have some idea what you're doing not a good idea but ears you can't you can't go too far wrong with your ears really as long as you you know do everything in a sterile way so we we did you know lobe piercings and that was cool that was really easy you know it goes straight through and like you've got you know like on a proper piercing needle you've got this like plastic tube with the needle so the whole lot goes through and then you pull the needle out and then you've just got this tube through so you can stick the piercing bar in and just slide it in really neatly um so you know so lobes it was like it was so easy and it was really satisfying as well that like that you could do it yourself and you could like yeah there was there was this weird satisfaction to it so we kind of experimented more um and we ended up kind of going higher up our ears and doing our cartilage and <laughs> That was the point at which it became quite traumatic because cartilage is actually really hard and dense and difficult to get through you know and obviously if it's a trained piercer doing it he knows he's gonna have to put on a lot of pressure and he just does it and it goes through really quickly and it's it's over and done with but when it's you yourself doing it even though you know I want this piercing I want it to go through it's not gonna kill me there's nothing to be scared of I want to get the needle through my ear at the same time your body has the opposite reaction um, and like both me and my boyfriend we had exactly the same experience with cartilage piercings that you would get it in part way and then you would hit you know the really like gristly bit of your cartilage and it kind of jams and you're trying to force it through and your body like starts going into some kind of shock and like you start sweating all over like you go hot and cold like you get really sweaty and really shaky and really like just irritable like if like if he would try and help me, I'd like just fuck off. Just I'm doing this to fuck off. Um, and his ear would like gush blood at that point as well. There would be so much blood. And in in every case, we managed to get the needle through eventually and to get the piercing in. But oh my god, like we've just felt so traumatized afterwards. Like the pain didn't go away for ages, and we just felt so shaken up by the whole procedure. And I think after doing a couple of those each, we were like cartilage. We'll we'll get the proper piercer to do cartilage ones in in future because it's miserable um but actually my tongue piercings as well like as I say I had two in there um and it took two attempts to get them done because the first the first guy I went to um oh my god no it was a bad idea it was this little piercer in the depths of the shopping mall which is already not a good idea you know if it's in a shopping mall it's gonna be not a very alternative piercer, you know what I mean? They're gonna be doing pretty standard piercings, you know, kind of noses and ears and belly buttons and not much else. Um, and I, you know, I went in and I was like, I think I was like 15 at that point, and I decided, you know, I wanted the two tongue piercings because at that point everyone was getting a single tongue piercing. I was like, that's really mainstream, that's really boring, I don't want that. Um, and I loved the idea of having two and then putting like little eyeball balls on so that it looked like my tongue was a creature with two eyes. That was what I wanted. So I, I went to this piercer and I explained that and he was like, well, we've never done that piercing before, but like if we can clamp it, we can totally pierce it. Yeah, that, that should have been my warning. You know, when they say they don't know, you know, when they just basically admit they don't know what they're doing, walk away. The other thing, oh my God, the amount he charged he, I think their standard price was £25 for a tongue piercing and he wasn't going to give me any discount on that at all for two so I was going to have to pay him £50 to get my tongue double pierced. Um, anyway, he, there are so many ways he fucked it up and he fucked it up in every conceivable way. Um, he started, I think he started with the right hand side and the main problem Oh my god, actually, the thing, he, the reason he pierced it too far back was because, like, I was 15 years old and he started asking me all these sexual questions, like, he was saying, so, like, are you straight or are you gay? And I was like, I'm, like, pretty much straight. Um, because he was like, well, you know, it's because, like, tongue piercings are, like, this oral sex thing, you know, and if you're, like, a lesbian, you're going to be going down on girls, you want it near the front. But if you're going to be going down on guys, you want it near the back, um, which is, you know, an interesting tidbit to pick up when you're 15. So, any, you know, because I'd said that I was like pretty much straight and he was like, OK, so you, you're going to be sucking cocks then. So you need like a far at the back tongue piercing to like 
be the best blowjobber you can be kind of thing. Like, what the fuck? I just wanted a tongue piercing. I didn't want it turned into this like sordid thing. So anyway, he pierced my tongue way too far back. Um, and he, he, I mean, he fucked it up immediately. Like it started bleeding quite a lot immediately, which clearly shouldn't happen. Um, because when he saw the amount of blood, he was like, Okay, I'm not gonna do the other one now. Um, like, just leave it, come back in a week or two, and I'll do the other one. Um, and like, as soon as, like, as I sat up, I think he'd put the bar in at this point, and I sat up, and then everything went very strange, and I kind of passed out, and I came to with him waving, like, smelling salts under my nose. And um, I was like, oh, this is horrible. Like, my tongue was still bleeding, it was horrible. Um, and I, I kind of like went out into the shopping mall and met my family and got some ibuprofen and then I I, I, I horribly yanked the, the tongue bar as well because like I went to take some painkillers and because I wasn't used to the feeling of the bar in my tongue yet when I swallowed the painkiller like I thought it was still on my tongue because I could still feel something on my tongue and I was like I tried to swallow it again and again and it wouldn't I was like oh my god this pill won't come out so I picked up the pill and yanked it out of my mouth and it was actually the tongue bar so I like yanked it really hard immediately after getting it so I, the whole thing was a disaster um and I I found it so hard to eat like the way he'd put it I like eating was really 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 difficult even with just the one piercing um and it was I think I think that piercing only lasted about two days before it went really 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 wrong um happily the night it went wrong my parents were away somewhere because i think they would have like taken me to hospital if they'd been here because my tongue like it had stayed swollen the whole time and after about two days it s swelled up like to a ridiculous degree um and like the bar he'd put in considering how far back he'd pierced my tongue where obviously it was quite thick he really hadn't put in a long enough bar and my tongue was just swelling up and swelling up and swelling up and it hurt like a motherfucker, like it really, really, really hurt. And it was bleeding again, it was bleeding so much again. Um, you know, and I'd been told like, oh, like ice water will bring down the swelling. So I was like sat in here. Um, I think I was watching Rocky. I think it was, it, this was going on at about midnight. It just got worse and worse over the night and I was watching a Rocky film. And because I was trying to bring down the swelling, I kept getting glasses of ice water and like swilling my mouth. But like there was so much blood coming out of my tongue all the time that I ended up like this table was just covered in about 15 glasses of like blood. By the end of the night, it looked like I was having like some bizarre vampire tea party because I was just like spitting out like bloody water everywhere. And it wasn't bringing down the swelling. The swelling was just getting bigger and bigger and it really, really hurt. And I kept going and looking in the mirror and I was like, I was really desperate for the swelling to go down because I was like, the bar is disappearing into my tongue. Like the bar was being eaten by my tongue as it got bigger and bigger. And um, eventually it got so painful and like the bar was literally disappearing into my tongue. I was like, if I don't take this out now, I'm not going to be able to get it out. And it's, I'm going to have to go to hospital. This is not going to be good. So at that point I took it out and I was really pissed off about the whole thing. And the pain didn't go away and it kept bleeding. Um, and actually that's the point at which it became really horrible because the hole in the top of my tongue there was like the innards of my tongue were being ejected through the hole there was like this this volcano bump of like purple purple like internal flesh coming out of the hole um and it was still bleeding and it still hurt like hell and yeah if, if my parents had been there like my mom would have freaked she would have taken me into hospital it all would have been a nightmare but because i was there on my own and you know, I was 15, so I was like, yeah, it'll be fine, whatever. Um, and so I, I pretty much ignored it, and it did... Eventually, after about two more hours, like, the volcano of flesh started retracting again. Um, but I, I had, like, a massive lump of scar tissue on my tongue for a full year after that. Um, so obviously I couldn't really go and get it re-pierced. So that, you know, that was ridiculous. I, like, I really should have gone back to that guy and tried to get my money back or something, because, like, what the fuck? He screwed it up so bad. Um, so, you know, eventually, about a year or so later, I still wanted my tongue pierced, but when I could still feel, like, this lump of scar tissue, I was like, it's probably not a very good idea. Um, but when I was 16, as I say, we had a friend who worked at the piercing place, 
And when we talked to him about that piercing, he was like, oh yeah, no, I've done a few of those. I did one on my girlfriend a few weeks ago. It's fine. I was like, yes, that's what I wanted to hear. Thank you, someone who's actually done it. Um, and he, oh my God, like it was so different. He got both piercings in, in one session. There was no blood at all. I had no problems eating afterwards immediately. Like there was none of the weirdness at all that I had with the previous one. Um, but again, I like, I passed out that time as well. I don't know why it wasn't particularly painful. I don't think, cause like in this country, they give you numbing stuff for oral piercings. I think in America, like there's some law saying you can't use numbing stuff at pierces, but here they give you this stuff that you like fill your mouth with. And by the time you spit it out, like you just like this, you can't feel anything. So it doesn't hurt to get your tongue pierced here. But I don't know, there's just something about tongues. Like I passed out that time. I passed out before he'd even got like the rings in. So I just had like the, the tube sticking through my tongue and I was just like uh, on the table. Um, but he, he managed to like get the rings in with me like semi-conscious and I went home and it was all good. And that piercing was fine for like 12 years. And then the infection debacle happened and the infection debacle was disgusting. I've I've kind of mentioned this a little bit before, but um, yeah, it's not nice. It was, I mean, when I was Googling on the internet, I saw all these sites saying, oh my God, if you ever get an infection in your tongue pierces, like, you, like you've got to go to the hospital immediately because there's all these, you know, veins and arteries and stuff in your tongue. And if the infection gets into it, it can like go to your heart. You can die immediately, all this bad stuff. Like, um, Fortunately, I didn't have like the symptoms they were saying like if you're I can't even remember they were saying like if you go all red and blotchy and stuff like that's the time to freak out um, I didn't have that. I just like the the piercing area. It all swelled up huge um, I did I did get like really kind of nauseous and dizzy and my heart was doing weird things and my eyes went kind of red and gunky as well So it's like the infection was pretty much everywhere at that point and they tried, I had to take about three different antibiotics before anything actually worked. Um, and the, like the lump around my piercing was just getting bigger and bigger. And it got to the point where I couldn't eat without choking. Like I couldn't talk because like my tongue was just like so big and clumsy, it was ridiculous. Um, and I, I'm one of these people who can't leave things alone. You know, like if I have a zit, I have to attack it. You know, and there was there was this lump in my tongue and I was like, there's got to be crap in there. If I can get some of the crap out of there, I'll be able to eat again. So I, I took a sterile needle um, one night when I was just, I was like really like I couldn't eat and it was really pissing me off. So I took a sterile needle and I stuck it into the depths of the lump in my tongue and I squeezed all the crap out. There was all this like icky crap. Um, like I had a tissue there so I could squeeze it directly into the tissue and I didn't particularly have to taste it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty gross. I kind of wish I'd filmed it cause it was, it was just fucking disgusting, but it didn't really do anything. I had to, I had to like do that a few times over the course of the infection. And like the doctors were horrified when I told them, I was like, it got so big. I, I fucking, I punctured it and I got the crap out of the <laughs> um but yeah it's horrible so so I lost I lost pretty much all the summer of 2013 because I felt so shit from the antibiotics um like I lost loads of weight as well because I couldn't really eat because I felt crap with my tongue and some of the antibiotics like you couldn't eat with at the same time and all of that so I lost loads of weight I felt like shit I didn't do anything all summer um you know and I was so resistant to taking out the piercing as well um I kept trying to like keep it in, trying to put it back in to keep the hole open. But eventually I was just so defeated by the infection. I was like, this sucks, man. I just want this to be over. So I took it out. And then yeah, about three months later, the second one started swelling up as well. I was like, oh, fuck this. No, I'm just going to take this out. I'm not, I'm not going to deal with that ever again. So those, those are kind of probably my most miserable and annoying piercing experiences. So I guess to move on to kind of happier piercing experiences, yeah, most of my kind of happy piercing experiences were, yeah, when I was kind of 16 with my boyfriend and we would, yeah, we would like make a ritual of it always. We would kind of get the train into Birmingham and then we'd go and get our piercing. And then like afterwards we would go to the Square Peg pub and we would have some like shots of aftershock with like some ibuprofen 
to kind of like kill the pain, get a bit drunk, and then we'd like go home with our shiny new piercings and it would be all really fun. Um, and like, I think probably the, the most bizarre one was when I got my first nipple pierced, I think. I think the left one was the one I got first. Um, and I, I, yeah, I got that when I was 16. And like, it didn't hurt particularly. I expected it to hurt. Like my boyfriend had had it, his nipple done before and he was like, yeah, it's really, really like sensitive for ages. And that was kind of one of the reasons I was getting it done was because he like really got off on like having his pierced nipple like played with because it was so sensitive. And like, I, my nipples never really had any sensation in them particularly. And I was hoping it would give me like, kind of, you know, erogenous sensation in my nipple and it, nah, -uh, no, I still no sensation really in either of them. Awkward. <laughs> I was just talking about my nipples and then my parents like came home. So I abruptly broke off and came up here and I have no idea how much they heard me talking about my nipples, but that's fucking awkward. So anyway, when I got the first one pierced, it bled like a bastard, like I had a bra on and I remember like on the train journey back I could feel like all this slipperiness it was awful and when we got back to the house I discovered that like it had formed this like there was just like this blood clot in my bra it was fucking disgusting so what we like it was still bleeding so what we did was we got some sellotape and we like sellotaped a sanitary towel over like my tit and um fortunately his parents weren't home so we like we just walked around half naked with like fucking sanitary towel stuck to my chest which was like really classy but yeah, I love, I love nipple piercings. I did only get, I only wanted the one initially because I quite liked the idea of having like one of each. But when I did like a topless photo shoot a few years later, it, the unevenness kind of bugged me. So I got the other one done. Um, I do actually have some like quite cool kind of close up pictures of my nipple piercings, but I don't think you're allowed to show nipples on YouTube. So I'm afraid I'd better not show you any nipples. Anyway, it's a bit weird, isn't it, when people start showing you their bits. I felt like that when, um, like, you know, the model Razor Candy. Like, I'd stalked her and her sister for years, and, like, you know, they were just, like, models, and that was cool. You know, and then she suddenly started doing porn. You know, it's like you suddenly stalk her, and, like, you see her, her anus and stuff. I was like, I just, I'm used to seeing your nice clothes, your nice hair, your pretty face. I was ill prepared for your anus. It's, it's very pink. I don't know, does she bleach it? It's very, I've never seen such a pink anus, but I don't look at many anuses. But anyway, it, it sends my thoughts into a strange and depraved spiral. So that's kind of how I feel about, you know, seeing people's bits when you don't expect it. So I, I dare say not many people actually, it would be weird to show you my nipple. So Anyway, this is a tangent. I told you this was this was going to be a waffly tangent of a video. But I think one thing that really kind of changed my opinions on piercings, like, yeah, when I was kind of 16 and I was getting, you know, a new piercing pretty much every week. Um, and at that point, I really didn't think there was any line to be drawn. Like, I kind of felt like the more extreme the piercing, the better. And I think if I'd known about tongue splitting and like ear pointing and all of that stuff, I probably would have wanted that done as well and we were actually thinking about getting like a suspension done you know when they stick like hooks in your back and like dangle you by your skin um we were thinking about trying to look for one of those like these days no oh, i don't know that makes me cringe i don't want that but back then i was like yeah i want to do all this extreme stuff that's fucking awesome um and the, the thing that kind of changed my mind was um you know the beamy zine site like that was still around back then and um th they would give you access to like all the members areas if you submitted pictures of your piercings and because we were like you know always getting new piercings done we submitted loads of pictures of like our ears in progress and like my tongue and nipples and stuff um, and they, they gave us like temporary membership to all the kind of locked down areas of BME where the really crazy shit lives and it was quite eye opening. I mean, like both of us at that age, we like we had quite disturbing internet browsing habits, you know, we went on, you know, Rotten and Ogrish and the YNC and, you know, all these awful, like, fucking splatter films and, like, snuff films and, like, just, just really, like, creepy psychopath stuff. We were kind of fascinated by all that stuff. 
at that age, so it, you, we weren't easily freaked out by stuff. But the stuff they had on, on Be Me, like they had people amputating bits of their toes and stuff, like cutting off a toe or two in, in the name of self-modification. They had people sewing like their scrotum, like sewing their whole cock inside their scrotum, like obviously not permanently, but yeah, just, just for fun, for an evening, like people chopping off lumps of their cock, people splitting their cock down the middle. But yeah, it, it was the toe removal that really got me. I was like, you know, because before that I'd been like, okay, the more extreme the piercing, that's really cool. Like, you know, push the boundaries, that's cool. You know, and then when I saw people just hacking off their own fucking toes, I was like, yeah, there's a line here. There's a line between like, you know, artistic body modification and mentally ill people self-mutilating in the, in the most horrific ways. Um, that, that did kind of make me think, okay, yeah, there's, there's some lines. It's, it's actually quite good to maintain some, some level of, of like, sanity when it comes to what, what you want to do to yourself. I mean, you know, there's, I've seen, actually, I've seen so much weirder stuff recently, um, on Reddit, like, the things that people do with their cocks these days is quite bizarre. I don't know if any of you have seen, but what, people seem to get done quite often is, you know, if, if, you've, if you've got like a, you know, a cock, they cut right down the middle um, and it, it after you've done that, it doesn't look like a cock anymore, like both pieces bend outwards, it looks like this deformed mushroom. Obviously you can't have penetrative sex with it anymore because it it's not like that, it's like this, you're not, not going to be able to do anything with this. So you, you can't really like have functional sex, but they do it because the, like the sensory stimulation is better because obviously you've got extra surfaces down the middle that you can touch down the middle and it apparently feels really good, but it's like, I don't know, it seems like a, like a forever alone level 1000 that, you know, you, you can never use your cock anymore. Most people aren't going to want to touch it because it looks crazy. But hey, it feels great when you wank because you can like get your fingers down inside it and all of that stuff. Um, also, people cut off the head of their cock, um, like just fucking cut it off. Hello. Why do they keep doing this to me when I'm talking about perverted stuff? So yeah, people cut off like they just cut off the head of their cock completely. You know where the majority of the sensation is, they just cut it off. Why? What are you, what? Why? 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 I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I mean, I've seen like really good tattooed cocks. Like, I think that looks quite cool. I think like tattooed cocks are quite awesome. But the whole hacking things apart in bizarre ways, I find very strange. This is really a tangent at this point. I don't know how we got from like, oh, ear piercings can be quite painful to, you know, people chop off bits of their cocks. And then, well, why are we talking about this? I think I actually saw one thing where a guy removed his testicle and then he fried it and ate it, which is kind of cool, I guess. If you're if you're gonna chop it off, then you might as well eat it because you don't you don't get many opportunities to like taste your own cooked flesh. So I guess that's I've got respect for that. But just slicing your cock down the middle. It's a very peculiar thing to do. So I guess in terms of any future plans for like body mod stuff, as I've mentioned, I suspect I probably can't get tattoos because of having all these stupid chemical sensitivities now. Um, I maybe one day will go to a tattoo and just get them to put like a dot of ink in me and I'll just see what happens. Um, but I don't know. I, kind of I'm so sick of feeling like crap from reactions that I'm not that keen on like deliberately choosing to go and potentially have one so I, I probably will never get any tattoos but I keep meaning to get like some custom temporary tattoos so I can at least wear my own designs as temporary ones because that would be cool but um like as far as piercings go I, I like I sometimes wear clip-on lip rings and I would quite like to get proper lip piercings but I did have my librette done and it eroded all my gums at the front so I had to take it out and I don't really you know now I'm getting my fucking teeth straightened and everything it would be so ridiculous to like 
fuck it all up with eroded gums and also like lipstick application would be more of a problem and I only like to wear lip rings with certain makeup so all in all I think I'm kind of better off just sticking with clip-ins um the one the one kind of body mod that I really would like though is like elf ear pointing because my ears they're so like round they stick out quite a lot and they're really like round I really don't like how round they are um so I would I would love like pointy little elf ears I would love that so much um but I've I've not looked into it properly I suspect it's very expensive and also the pain element kind of is is quite worrying like that's gotta really hurt you know if they're like literally slicing open your ear taking a piece out sewing it back together oh that's gotta hurt how are you even gonna sleep like if you can't lie on your sides oh it sounds like the the healing process and all of it it sounds quite traumatic it's the kind of thing i wish i'd had done when i was like younger and braver and more resilient um so i don't know if i'll ever get it done but I would like to, I do need to like look into it and actually speak to someone who does it and ask them all of these things, you know, how long does it hurt for, how bad does it hurt, how much does it cost, how long does it take to heal, because I do worry, you know, about my body being like old and broken, like it would suck if you had something like that done and then it just didn't heal properly, you know, you ended up with like keloids everywhere or it just just didn't heal and you've got this like fucked up ear forever so that's like my paranoid fear but I would love I would love like little pointy ears I mean I do have some you know some of those like metal metal pointy ear like pixie cuff things I do like them but I, I want proper proper pointy fairy ears that would be cool but mm, in an ideal world if I could like ma wave a magic wand and just have them then I would totally do that um but the pain and the mm, kind of puts me off but I do I need to look into it so yeah if anyone knows anyone in you know the Midlands of England <laughs> um who does that then I would be interested to hear tell me tell me things um because that would be interesting this is this is tangential waffle and I'm becoming tired now I'm gonna go and snooze I think and all these people have arrived man i've been i've been at home on my own for a week and it's been so lovely and now they're all back and it's distressing me mm. so yeah i'm gonna shut up now i think this this is such a such a waffle i'm like properly falling asleep mm. bye bye <laughs>